Today we're out here in the Rocky Mountains taking a look at the all new for 2016 Kia Optima. Kia has made this a little bit wider, a little bit longer, and retained all of what we liked about the last generation Kia Optima. Up front we have a look that's very similar to the outgoing Optima. You'll notice the big difference right over here with this tiger nose grille, and that's what Kia calls this particular design element. You'll notice it is now a little bit better integrated with the headlamps. We also have a new LED daytime running lamp strip that's on the side and the bottom of the headlamp right there. And we have our radar cruise control module inserted right down here below the main portion of the grille. Now included with this generation of the Kia Optima, if you get the radar, cruise control is an autonomous braking system that would be a low speed system designed to completely prevent certain rear end style accidents. In order to help the proportion up front, Kia has actually made this generation of the Optima about an inch wider than the last generation Optima. That gives us a little bit better of a look up front and a little bit more space on the inside. The Optima's dimensions are up for 2016, but not as much as many vehicles that grow from year to year. This is now about 191.3 inches long or so. That means this is right about the same length as a Honda. Accord. Now the big difference you'll notice between this and something like a Honda Accord is right back here because we do get a much more coupe-like profile to the Optima than you get in the Camry or the Accord. Now very much like the Fusion and the Chrysler 200 that does limit rear passenger headroom but it gives us this sexy profile right here. And Kia accentuates that by continuing this chrome strip all the way down here onto the trunk lid. To improve interior room, Kia also stretched the wheelbase about half an inch improving legroom front and rear in real world situations. And we now have a little turbo badge right up here to tell people that you paid extra for that turbocharged engine. The rear end has been tweaked to give this a much sportier appearance than the last generation. We have these optional all new LED tail lamps. They're angled in to give a little bit more aggressive look. We also have a backup camera here that's also supplemented with an all around camera system that is available. And that places four cameras all around the vehicle and a display in the center console. We also have twin exhaust tips that are well integrated into the sporty looking lower valence and nicely integrated rear parking sensors. The 1.6 liter turbo model gets an eco badge right there below the tail lamp and then we only get a single exhaust tip below that. For 2016 there are three different engines. The LX and the EX get a 2.4 liter four cylinder engine. It produces 185 horsepower and 178 pound feet of torque. For improved fuel economy there is now an LX turbo that gives you a 1.6 liter four cylinder turbocharged engine that produces 178 horsepower and 195 pound-feet of torque. Now in addition to that turbocharged engine, we also get a seven-speed dual clutch transmission that's very similar to what we've seen in the Hyundai Sonata Eco. Then the model that we have right here is the SX turbocharged model that gets a two-liter four-cylinder turbocharged engine that produces 245 horsepower and 260 pound-feet of torque. You'll notice that this two-liter turbo is down on power versus the last two-liter turbo. Now that will affect your zero to 60 time but the reason that Kia did that is because it improves the drivability of this engine. The torque is around the same as the last engine, but it happens much, much lower in the RPM band. That means that when you're climbing up a hill, this engine doesn't need to downshift, and the previous engine did. Now on the flip side, that does mean you're gonna be a little bit slower zero to 60. Fuel economy is highest in the 1.6 turbo, getting 32 miles per gallon combined, and the lowest in the two liter four cylinder turbo, getting 25 miles per gallon combined like we're seeing here. Now at the moment, the current generation Optima Hybrid will be sold alongside this generation of the new Optima sedan. That won't change until sometime in 2016 when we will see the all new 2017 Hybrid. Front seat comfort has dramatically improved for 2016, and I give this 10 out of 10 points up front if you get the optional seats. These would be the optional 12-way power seats with four-way adjustable lumbar support and two-position memory. Now this seat design is all new for Kia, and it really is a big difference between this and a lot of the competition out there that only has two-position lumbar. Now what's more important for me is how this particular system adjusts for height. There are two different ways to do four-way lumbar support out there. There's a three airbag setup, which basically just gives you three places up and down the seat that can inflate or deflate to give you lumbar support. It's not that adjustable. Or there's this particular variety that seems to also be used by the Chrysler 200. It causes a bulge to actually come out in the seat and that bulge is actually infinitely adjustable within its range. That means you can place this lumbar support exactly where you want it. We also get a new tilt telescopic steering column with a large range of motion, making it much easier for shorter or taller drivers to find a comfortable driving position. The last thing that's changed up front for 2016 is that we now have the availability of a 10-way power passenger seat that we didn't in the last model. That means the seat bottom cushion is adjustable for height and really the only limit that we get is that we don't have the four-way lumbar support. We only get a two-way lumbar support over there for the passenger. This car has absolutely no problem when it comes to rear seat legroom. You can see that I have about six or seven inches left sitting right here behind myself in the driver's seat at six feet tall. The problem is headroom and it's all caused by the profile that we get on the side of the Optima. It means that if I were to sit upright in this back seat and have my head touching the headrest, my head is touching the ceiling. 
Now that's not unique to the Kia. We get the same sort of thing going on over in the Ford, the Chrysler, and any of the mid-sized sedans out there that are trying to give you this sexier profile, including things like the Subaru Legacy. Really only the very upright, more traditionally styled vehicles in this segment give you adequate room for a six foot passenger in the rear, and that would be the Camry or the Accord. Now aside from that, these rear seats are quite comfortable. The seat bottom cushions are not terribly close to the floor, and the seat back angle is relatively comfortable. We also have a softly padded center armrest and a 12 volt power port and a USB charging port in the back. Also new for 2016, we get available window shades that are built right into the rear doors. Taking a closer look at the interior, our particular model has the optional panoramic moonroof. Both the driver and the front passenger have two-way adjustable headrests and height adjustable shoulder belts. Since we are in the SXL model, we get this very attractive quilted leather trim. This is sort of a brown leather. Now there's sort of a reddish leather available in the SX, and this SXL model gets this brown Nappa leather trim. It's cross-stitched, as you can see, in those little hatches right there, and then we also get perforation for the seat ventilation system. Now, in case you're wondering, Napa leather is one of the softer grades of leather, and that simply means that these seats are much softer than you'll find in most of the entries in this segment. Over on the front doors, we have soft touch injection molded plastics on the upper and middle section of the door, as well as a soft touch armrest. You will find harder plastics down lower on the door right around here, and in this bottle holder in the door as well. Now, the dashboard and the doors do benefit from one of the latest trends in automotive interiors, and this is after stitching on an injection molded dashboard. So the parts you're seeing here on the left and the right side of your screen are actually just regular old injection molded dashboard components, and then they run over them with a sewing machine, giving it this stitched look. So these are not actually multiple pieces of fabric tied together, but this is real stitching in that dashboard. The overall dashboard design in this generation of the Optima is slightly reminiscent of Mazda meets BMW. We have this chrome ring around the infotainment screen in our model. Our model does have the up-level 8-inch screen right here, and you can see that we do have the 360 surround camera showing right now. Now, we are in drives that's showing the front view. If we put it in reverse, it would show you the backup camera view with the dynamic lines. Obviously, the big styling difference in this interior versus the BMW and the Mazda is that this dashboard is quite upright, and the screen is not sitting up above the dashboard. It is well integrated into the dash. You will find the SD card for the mapping database right over here behind that slot. It is a standard SD SD card, and then we do have a large glove compartment right there on the passenger side. Quite large, very easily able to accommodate an iPad or other tablet computer. Continuing on down, we have a storage cubby here that was very easily able to accommodate an iPhone in that manner. We have a single USB port. We also have Qi wireless charging as indicated by that little light right there, and a 12 volt power outlet. Of course, iPhones can't Qi charge at the moment, but it is limited to certain devices as well as iPhones with a Qi charging sleeve attached to them. Continuing our way back, we have another storage cubby right there, two very large cup holders, and our very traditional console shifter right here over to the left for manual mode, up for up, and down for down. Now behind that shifter, we have a few new buttons here. We have the heated steering wheel button, which is standard on most models of the Optima. That is a very interesting choice. Drive mode select right over here. This changes the way the drivetrain behaves. We have eco, we have sport, and normal. Then we have our heated and ventilated seat controls for the driver and the front passenger seat an electric parking brake, an auto brake hold, and the button to enable or disable that 360 view camera system. Auto brake hold is one of my favorite new car features because I am a little bit lazy. You simply enable this little button right here, and then when you're at a stop, put it in drive right here, and I take my foot off the brake pedal, the car actually holds the brake pressure on the brake system, and then just tapping the accelerator pedal allows us to continue driving off. Now that's different than just applying the electric parking brake, which in many vehicles will do the same thing, because the vehicle is using the regular brakes, not the parking brake, for this auto brake hold. Between the front seats, we have a softly padded center armrest, which does open to reveal a very large center console. We have a little divider right there, and then we have an additional charging port right inside. This is charge only. It does not interface with the UVO system. Over on the driver's side, we have this attractive four-dial instrument cluster, speedometer on the right, tachometer on the left, and then a color multifunction display between. The multifunction display is controlled via these buttons on the steering wheel. We use this button to change pages, OK button, and then toggle up down. This display is where you'll find things like your trip computer, navigation instructions with turn-by-turn -turn directions there if enabled, the status of our safety systems, including the radar cruise control system, certain media information. We also have tire pressure and other maintenance information right there. And then we cycle on over to user settings where we can control certain lights, sound settings, service intervals, resets, etc. Perhaps the biggest change in this interior is this Volkswagen meets Audi flat bottom steering wheel. It has very, very nice sport grips. It's one of the best steering wheels that I have driven in a long time. We have sport bump outs right up here. It gets narrow right there for you to put your thumbs. Very solid hand section right there. Another hand grip down there, and again, that flat bottom right over there. You'll also notice that we have shift paddles on our particular model 
up on the right and then down on the left. Many manufacturers have been reducing their button counts, but it seems like all of those buttons have made their way over to Kia. We have our radar cruise control controls right over here. They're a little bit different if you don't opt for the radar adaptive system. Cruise control, enable, disable, resume, set right there, cancel, and then the distance control. Then we have the buttons that control that multifunction display I showed you earlier. On the left side of the steering wheel, we have phone hang up and pick up buttons that are dedicated. We have a volume control right there. We press in to mute up, down for your track selection or station selection, mode selection button, and then a voice command button there. The 2016 redesign has caused Kia's trunk to grow to nearly 16 cubic feet. This is one of the largest in its category and definitely larger than the Camry or the Accord. We also get a temporary spare tire and a small amount of additional storage underneath that load floor. More surprising, however, I think you could actually fit a full-size spare tire down there if you wanted to. Now, one thing I personally dislike is that the only place to recline the rear seat backs is right back here in the trunk area. You can't do it from inside the cabin. Overall, when it comes to my exclusive trunk comfort index, I'm going to give this 10 out of 10 points, not just because of its spaciousness, but also because we have a very nice helper handle to help you close the trunk lid. Now, Kia really hasn't always been the sporty brand in the mass market segment, but they have been really trying to change that with their latest models, and this new Kia Optima is no exception. Instead of a V6 engine under the hood, we have this 2-liter 4-cylinder turbocharged engine, which compares very well with the rest of the competition, including the competition that uses V6 engines. The power delivery in this engine is much improved over the last generation of turbo, where the power really came on quite high in the RPM band. Now, in this particular engine, the torque is more usable than the last engine, even though this is actually a hair slower 0 to 60. This is where some people start to disagree about engine power and engine performance. Because if you're climbing up a steep hill and you just want a smooth driving experience, then you want more low-end torque. If, however, you're at the drag strip and you want the fastest acceleration time, then it doesn't matter quite as much where the torque actually comes into play. Now, obviously, I haven't had access to the private road in California where I do my 0 to 60 or braking testing, but this should be fairly similar to the outgoing model. Braking in this midsize sedan segment is largely a function of the tires that you get on the vehicle, and the model that we're testing right here, which is the SXL model, has 235 with tires, and the curb weight is relatively light for this segment. When it comes to handling, the last generation Optima was one of the sportier entries in this segment, and that continues for this generation Optima. However, the last generation was a little bit rough around the edges, and they've really smoothed off a lot of those edges for this generation. It's most noticeable in the ride that we get in this cabin. The last generation Optima could get a little bit upset over broken pavement, and that doesn't seem to be happening in this model, especially around corners. Now, on the flip side, the ride is actually a little bit firmer in this Optima than you might think. Now, the firm ride is because Kia is positioning this as one of the sportier entries in the segment. Now, it does get a little bit softer in the base models, a little bit firmer in the upper end sportier models. Interior refinement has been significantly improved in this generation Optima, and it now has one of the quietest cabins in the category. That's really down to the acoustic laminated window glass that we get in most of the versions of the Optima. Now, again, that base model doesn't get a lot of the features that we've been talking about, but that does enable it to get that low starting price. Now, obviously, it's difficult to comment on fuel economy again because we haven't been driving this in my usual environment, but fuel economy has been fairly average for the 2-liter turbocharged segment. Keeping in mind, we have been driving this car up and over some relatively steep mountain passes. We've still been averaging around 24 miles per gallon, which is pretty good. Safety is something that continues to improve from one generation to another in most vehicles, and so it is with the Optima as well. We get a wide variety of safety systems, either standard or optional in this particular vehicle. Our model has basically everything, and that includes blind spot monitoring, cross traffic detection, the 360 degree camera so you can see what's around you. We also have radar cruise control with full speed range and collision warning, as well as a new autonomous braking system. The autonomous braking system is active at low speeds in this particular vehicle. Now, Kia has not told us exactly which speeds it is available on, but that information should be available very soon. My guess is that this is very similar to the other systems out on the market, and it should operate from around 35 to 25 miles an hour or so. The slower you're going, the more likely it is that the vehicle will come to a complete stop. However, within that speed range, the system should do its utmost to at least slow you down and mitigate the accident. Our particular model also has the full HID headlamps that also steer in corners to give you a better view of the road at night. Now, the overall feel in the Optima is among the best in this segment, but it does change based on the version of the Optima you get. If you get the base versions of the Optima, then we don't get the same steering rack that we have in this SXL model. 
All versions of the Optima use an electric power steering system, but the base versions use one where the motor assistance system is actually in the steering column right here, whereas the upper level trims use one that's located on the steering rack, which is normally something that you find in luxury vehicles. That does give you a better feel, it reacts a little bit more quickly, and allows a tiny bit more feedback to the steering column. Now obviously, any vehicle in this segment is still front wheel drive, and they are still relatively numb thanks to electric power steering overall. So we are kind of talking about shades of gray here, but this does have about the same kind of steering feedback that we get in the Chrysler 200 and in the Ford Fusion. I would say it is perhaps a little bit lower than the Mazda 6, but not that much lower. Interestingly enough, one of the big differentiators between this and some of the competition is the transmission. Because we are starting to see more CVTs or continuously variable transmissions out there. We see them in the Altima, we also have them in the Honda Accord. And that does sap a little bit of the fun out of the vehicle. We also have vehicles like the Chrysler 200, which are using a 9-speed automatic transmission, and that doesn't shift like your average automatic transmission. This does have a more traditional feel to it. The paddle shifters are also relatively quick in terms of operation, and you can cue shifts in this transmission so you can click the transmission paddle bound four shifts or up four shifts and it will cue them and then execute them when it can. These paddle shifters also seem to respect your high gear choices so right now if we put it in fifth gear we can floor the car and it won't automatically downshift for us. That is my preference. Pricing has been announced for 2016 and this now starts at $21,840. That may sound like this is more expensive than a Volkswagen Passat which is advertised as the least expensive midsize sedan in the United States. However, this has an automatic transmission, and the Passat for that low starting price is manual only. Now on the flip side, the Passat does give you a 1.8 liter turbocharged engine, which I would say is about the equal of the up level 1.6 liter turbocharged engine in this model. The next step up is the EX model at 24,890, then the SX model that we're testing here that gets you that two liter turbocharged engine at 29,690. The SXL, which is the top of the line model, is 35,790. As we've come to expect out of Kia, the big thing about the Optima is value because we get a lot of features and goodies and gadgets that we don't find in the competition at the same price. So while the price tag may not necessarily be lower than the competition, you will find more in this than you will in your average Camry, Accord, Fusion, Altima, etc. As also tends to be typical with Kia, I think that the best values can be had either in a mid-range trim or in the top of the line trim. Because just that one step up into the EX model buys you a lot of standard equipment that you don't find in the competition for $24,890. That includes two-zone climate control, the LED tail lamps, 17-inch wheels, power folding mirrors, acoustic side glass, automatic up-down front windows, two rapid USB charging ports, heated leather-wrapped steering wheel and leather seats, the push-button start, the 12-way power driver's seat with two-position memory as well. With all of that added up, you actually get about $2,000 more equipment in a $24,890 Kia than you find in a similarly priced Fusion, Accord, Altima, etc. That's of course before we even start talking about Kia's 10-year, 100,000-mile powertrain warranty, which will cost you about $1,000 to duplicate on many mainline brands. At the top end of things in that 2-liter SXL model, it compares incredibly well to the Chrysler 200 and the Ford Fusion in their loaded trims. Now we don't get all-wheel drive in the Optima at any price like we can get in the Fusion or the 200, and that does mean there is a driving dynamics difference. However, like price for like price, you won't find all-wheel drive at these prices in the competition anyway. This will have the autonomous braking system, the well-designed radar cruise control, that luxurious Napa leather interior as well, things that you don't find in the competition. This interior is definitely better put together than the Chrysler 200 or the Ford Fusion, although we don't get real wood trim in this interior like you can get in the Chrysler. Now in terms of overall comfort, I would rank them relatively similarly. The top end Ford Fusion is not as comfortable as the seats that we get in this particular model, especially up front with the new redesigned seats that Kia gives us. Now the Chrysler 200 has very comfortable front seats, but all three of them do have quite limited back seats because of the sexy profile that we get in all three of those vehicles Rear seat headroom especially is kind of limited. Now aside from those two competitors, there really aren't any competitors in this segment that give you this kind of feature functionality at this price point. In most of the competition, you have to step up to the next model in their lineup in order to get what's going on here. So for Nissan, for instance, that would be the Nissan Maxima. For Toyota, you'd have to step up to the Toyota Avalon. Obviously, the closest direct competitor would be the Hyundai Sonata. Now, the Sonata is also very closely priced to the Kia, and value is relatively similar. However, the option packages are arranged differently, so depending on what you're looking for, one may be less expensive than the other. One thing's for sure, however, I think that this exterior is a little bit more attractive than the Sonata, a little bit more aggressive. I also think that the interior is definitely more attractive and better put together than the Sonata. The Sonata comes across as sort of a luxury Volkswagen product in terms of overall style. It's quite angry. 
rectangular, the way the dashboard is shaped, etc. This looks a little bit more luxurious in every form. When it comes to performance, the V6 models out there will beat most of the turbocharged engines in this particular segment, this vehicle included. So I do expect the Chrysler 200 to scoot to 60 faster in V6 form than this model in 2-liter 4-cylinder form. In terms of fuel economy, Nissan's Altima still wins in this particular segment. However, this model actually beats the Altima in terms of front seat comfort for me. So I would have to rank that Altima one notch down. I think that if I were shopping in this particular segment, this is the car that I would get. It would be a tough call between this and the Hyundai Sonata Hybrid, which is the next generation Hyundai and Kia hybrid system that we won't see in the Altima until next year. And at that time, I have a sinking suspicion that the Optima would be my preferred choice. Now, personally, I would also like to see a 1.6 liter turbocharged EX or SX model because right now you're limited to the base LX trim level options in that 1.6 liter turbocharged model. So if you do want the extra fuel economy, you have to give up the leather seats and all the things that are going on in this model or even in that EX trim. Thanks for taking the time to check out this video. Again, I'm Alex Dykes and this has been the 2016 Kia Optima. Be sure and click that subscribe banner down there at the bottom of your screen so you can be updated on all of my latest videos, including the full and complete review of this vehicle when we can get our hands on one for one week. In the meantime, if you're looking for a mid-size sedan, you should definitely put the Kia Optima on your list. And I would say actually right at the top of your list, right next to that 2016 Honda Accord. I'll see you next week.